like, you know, like I talk about that on my channel because um, there's a lot of discussion on my channel about um, like, what's the best combo, you know, for self-defense, you know? And I always say like, if you want to pick up something really fast, you know, wrestling, if you have access to wrestling and, and, and boxing and they're, you know, like you, you could, Great I think, combination, man. yeah, you could, you could get good at those. I believe faster than you can get good at, uh, for example, judo or uh, even BJJ, right? BJJ, I might be wrong there. You could get pretty good at that too. But I mean, if it's just for self-defense, you know? Well, if you had no more than, let's say, blue belt level skills in jujitsu, mm -hmm. and you apply that to like, uh, you know, self-defense and fighting, you'd be pretty formidable. You'd be very formidable. If you had some judo and wrestling, along with some boxing skills, and you just picked up even even just a blue belt level skill, you, you would be pretty safe mm -hmm. for the most part. The higher levels of jujitsu are more geared to fighting other jujitsu guys. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense because yeah. how much jujitsu do you really need for self defense? You know, yeah, against your your common thug, you right? Yeah, it always comes down to like the stuff you learn your first year, pretty much. You know, mm -hmm. but here's the thing. In realistic fighting, the closest thing to a real fight is like when white belts come into the club because they thrash and they do unexpected stuff. They, you know, they don't react to any setups. You know, they they move in very unexpected manner. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of like real fighting. What we do in class with each other when sparring is pretty unrealistic. Only another jujitsu guy would react that way. And you know, when it comes to self defense, no one. No one's going to ever react that way. That's why it's important just to practice the basic self-defense. Yeah, because I, I remember like when I when I first started jujitsu, after about um, after about three to six months, we'd have like a, a beginner walk-in. And that's when I realized, wow, like I could really manhandle this guy, even if he was yeah. bigger and stronger than me, because he just didn't know anything at all. And then of course he would fight for his life. Some of these guys were big and strong. But it yeah. didn't matter because they didn't know anything. So yeah, well, I think you would get him. It might take a while to cook a really big, strong guy, but you eventually get him. In the meantime, he can't do much to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I exactly, exactly. You know, like if a big, strong, athletic guy, it's gonna take a little bit of time to, you know, to to wear him out and to to choke him or tap him. But then once that guy picks it up, after about three months, if he if he sticks to it <laughs> after three months, like I had a guy like that, I couldn't after three months, he was horrible, like. It, forget about it. He he just you know. I've had the same experience. Big, heavy, strong, naturally athletic guys. You know. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, they pick it up pretty quick. And you know, it's really funny too because you know we we would have young men, sometimes teenagers, mm -hmm. and sometimes smaller guys, and, and we'd always say, "Hey, you know, to the other guys, be really nice to him because he's not going to be little forever, man." <laughs> <laughs>